And that's how it's done. Hi folks, welcome to the first episode of Mike on Ice. I'm your host, Mike Cooklick. I've been fishing pretty much my whole life uh, here in Manitoba. Uh, just recently, in the past four years, I've really gotten into ice fishing and uh, I actually like it better than summer fishing. Hard to believe <laughs> in this Manitoba cold weather. Now this shouldn't take long to set up. But a lot of you people know what I'm talking about. It's a passion and it's, uh, it's something that you enjoy and you keep doing. This is where I sleep sometimes and I get in trouble at home. With me today is my nephew and good friend, Ron Cooklick. Hi. Do you got the copyright on that or? Absolutely not. We decided to come out today, uh, do some fishing on the Red River. And we came to Sugar Island where we've been here for the last two, three hours. The first spot we were at, 24 feet of water, heavy current, trying to use uh, heavy enough jigs so we hit the bottom and we just couldn't. It's actually uh, old technology. They used it in the Second World War, I believe it was. And uh, what it does, it's real life, like fast. As soon as you move your jig, you'll see it move on the flasher as well. Got a stinger hook on here. It's for if the uh, pickerel are fighting light. You got an extra hook on there to snag them. Just want to put it through the through the lip and let it sit like that so it stays alive. So I had the uh, flasher set up and uh, we couldn't even get the the uh, jig to show up on the flasher and we were three feet over past the hole with the transducer. I like those flashers. Yeah, these are true to life, they're fast and uh, they help you catch fish. The current's a little strong here. We've got about 22, 23 feet of water. So it's taken our jigs far down, we can't hit bottom. So we're gonna figure we move closer to shore. <laughs> It's gonna be less current. The guys over there said they were catching. You pick your your weapon there, whatever holes you want. Well, we weren't having much luck in the first spot with the uh, current and everything, so we decided to move it a little closer to the uh, to the shore. And sure enough, there was uh, less current. Our lines went straight, straight down. down. We hit the bottom, and uh, sure enough, we started catching fish. Straight two. It's a keeper. We only caught a couple, but uh, you know, it's a start. Well, First day out. Well, I caught a fish I, I don't know well, I, I do recall myself catching one but it's nothing to brag about was that a, I thought wasn't that your bait <laughs> yeah it was my bait I try to pull a fast one on you okay okay we'll we'll count it but let's just remember who caught the bigger one yeah okay day's not over yet my boy you know at the first spot we walk up to our where we want to start fishing and sure enough there's uh, Mariah on the ice yeah and I I don't agree with uh people just leaving the, the fish to die on the ice. You catch a fish, a junk fish you call it, you know, put it back in the water. There's no reason to, to leave them lying on the ice like that. Uh, you try to, for releasing, you try to get them back in the water as soon as you can. With these temperatures here, the uh, eyes on the fish tend to freeze really fast. You know, what, uh, if you want to take a picture of your fish, the best thing to do is try to leave it in the water uh, and get your camera set up don't take your, your pickerel or walleye out, leave it on the ice because uh, snow gets on those eyes and they'll freeze right away. Yeah, that's right. And even though you, uh, you catch and release a fish, if it's out for too long, it might swim away, but its eyes are frozen and yeah, it's going to be injured. Yeah, they're, they'll, they'll end up dying. That's so. right. See you later. <laughs> 